that fascination of our origins and, and where we're from has always just been there inside of me. And when my mom would take me to the library, I was like five, six, seven years old, I'd be coming back with anatomy books and, and you know, these <laughs> medical books and everything like that. Paleo art involves, it's the merger of, of art and science in a very true, raw sense, uh, because the art is not informed at all without the science. If there's no science to begin from, unfortunately, we don't do any art. <laughs> I focus my attention to uh, fossil humans, our ancestors, and uh, extinct cousins. I extrapolate whatever I can from the fossil record, from all the information that is out there, geological, um, environmental, present day conditions, anything that we can understand about those past conditions to formulate, I guess, the best guess or hypothesis as to what these individuals may have looked like. This reconstruction that I'm working on is going to be used in two ways. I'm going to generate a real skull and a real physical reconstruction from it, but it would also serve me as a basis to create digital models from later on. So for example, Lucy, I did the reconstruction for her, then I photographed her, and then I created uh, this, this digital image of her using textures of gorillas and chimpanzees and orangutans and to create a digital image. Now I've moved one step further and created a 3D digital model of Lucy which I can then manipulate in real time on the computer. But this all begins with this right here and without this here there is no reconstruction. That's what separates this work from uh, just an artistic representation that isn't really informed um, and this is what makes it science. This is what keeps it accurate and true. hominids to be slightly reacting to us as if somehow we were looking through a portal and they were seeing that portal and not quite sure of what to make of us or what are we. It is set on a shifting landscape that goes through a 24-hour cycle of lighting starting at uh, midnight six million years ago, moving through noon and midday at about uh, two and a half, two million years ago, and then back into 11.59 p.m. right now. And Ethiopia has a very wide array and paints a very nice picture of the progression of, of human evolution and the development of bipedalism. Just, it just offers a very nice picture of what was going on back then. Well, at the end of the day, I just love to make heads. I love, to, I love to see the faces emerge from fossils that haven't been seen by eyes in, in millions of years, of hundreds of thousands of years. To be able to sort of bring the past into the present is, is just a rush in that. You know, some people skydive and I get that same rush just looking at these things and putting them together and, you know, I get to be a part of this amazing story of, of human origins.